What's up guys, today I'll be talking about the lessons I learned from the stock market in 2022. And I started investing in the market around 2019-ish, going getting into more short-term trading and like option trading. And during the 2020 crash, that's when I like realized like long-term investing for me works. I'm not bashing short-term investors, option traders, or like crypto investors, but this kind of like works for uh, me. I'm more like a buy and hold investor. Like I think five years out for the specific companies that I own in my stock portfolio. And I haven't really been in the bear market before or like in a correction. Since I've been investing, the market has been up. Maybe I saw a little dip it back in maybe 2019. There was like a small correction. The 2020 crash too when the bear, when the major indexes fell the fastest in a month, like 30%, over 30%. Then we saw that big uh, turnaround, like a V-shaped recovery, like that crash in March of 2022, like February of like 2021. When every stock that was risk that was unprofitable that was kathy wood you could say was at 52 week highs in including myself i was like on cloud nine my portfolio at this age was crazy how much it was worth we were kind of like in a bubble uh fundamentals didn't matter it was just all hype around it and people were just pumping and dumping like these specific companies but these last like 10 11 months in my opinion like have been very devastating for like the major markets and also retail investors like me I call myself like a new investor, but I haven't really experienced like not making money or when my just portfolio is just stagflating. I think it's a really good time to learn when when everything's down, just getting having like a process for you when investing, right? It was like one of the worst times to uh, start learning investing during the 2020 crash when everything was going up five, six percent every single day, and like that's not how the like, the markets like really work in my opinion. Like over the long term, maybe in the short term it does sometimes, but in the long term it doesn't. Fundamentals will drive the market in the long term. And there's like a quote by uh, Benjamin Graham. He's a famous uh, value investor that taught Warren Buffett, his mentor. It was from like the intelligent investor. In the short term, the market's a voting uh, voting machine. In the long term, the market is a weighing machine, meaning like hype drives the market in the short term. But long term, fundamentals and valuations will propel stock valuations over the long term. The first lesson I learned when uh, investing in 2022, just experiencing the market, like the day-to-day -day fluctuations, why the indexes or what drives stocks going up and down in the short term and long term. So I'm just get more wiser from my experience in the market over time. So general experience in the market. Number two, getting keeping up with the financial news. Like you could go on YouTube or go on CNBC or Market Watch or Bloomberg, keeping up with all the news or what drives everything just to get more experience on it. And the third lesson I learned is like having cash available at all times. When you're a college student, you don't have as much income coming in. And I learned like if you want to grow your portfolio exponentially or bigger, you got to have cash flow coming in every single month. It's cool to have a couple hundred dollars a week coming in. But when you get that trade or when you get your bachelor's degree, you get start that nine to five, which in the short term, it might not sound appealing to me. But in the long term, it's like one of my goals to grow my portfolio and to retire early. And when you have your income right first, that's when you could start just really just getting your life straight. And the fourth lesson I learned in this year is just thinking for myself. Like back in 2021 and 2020, I didn't really just think for myself when investing in stocks. I, in stocks, I maybe I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers and just blindly investing and didn't know my risk tolerance and why they invested in it and like how much money they're putting in of their net worth into it. Maybe it was like 10, 20K to them, but it was 1%, but that's a lot of money to me at currently for me. And I gotta understand like what I'm investing to first, having a process and that's it. I could go on YouTube, find a, a cool stock idea, but I gotta first do my due diligence, which I could explain later in, down the line for my videos. And my number five right now is just like having a process when investing, sticking with the shulker of competence. Investing in industries or companies you already know and understand on a high level. I don't invest in biopharmaceuticals because I don't understand that on a high level. I understand tech, I understand retail, I invest, I understand golf or streaming platforms or social media, things like that. That's what I understand, but I don't understand other industries. So just remember to invest in what you know. Uh, the next tip is like, is being patient with the market. Like if you want to create real wealth in the markets, it's not short term trades. Like most people's mindset when investing is they don't have the patience to wait for that capital appreciation. There was a famous investor back in the 70s and 80s called Peter Lynch and he owned one of the biggest funds, like one of the most famous funds out there called the Magellan Fund for Fidelity. And his year over year return was like, what, 25, 28% year over year returns, which was crazy when the market returned 10% annually and he returned 2X, almost 3X to market. And most of his investors, they didn't get those gains. They were buying at the top and selling at the bottom. 
so they didn't have that cost averaging up strategy and they were just going through the hype cycles. And when you're, if you wanna become a real true investor in the markets, you either cost average up into an index fund if you want to don't do the work, or number two, invest in well sound businesses for the long term, put them in the file cabinet and that's it. You could check on them every three months or every month when they have their quarterly reports or just specific news on them and that's it. Just forget about it. And number, uh, I think, I don't know, seven or eight, Valuations matter. Like when you're trying to buy a specific company, sure you could go through their basic business model, look at their management team, but valuations matter. Like I like looking to the four PEs, the price of sales, price of free cash flows, or all that stuff. I'm predicting like five years out, how much uh, cash flows or profit they're gonna be. This company's gonna be uh, producing in the next five years or so, and see if it's a good deal. And like my opinion, there are many stocks out there that are deals right now. You could look at the charts of PEs, like small and mid caps look generally cheap based on historic measures. Large caps have, have been coming down like Facebook, the Amazons, the Googles. And one of the last lessons I learned when experience that I learned right now in 2022 is like, just do you. Like, not a lot of people like take investing seriously at this age, but it's gonna compound later down the line and people that didn't take investing seriously at this age will say, shit, the years behind I should've taken seriously. Like that's what most older people in their 50s and 60s about to retire never thought about it because the schools don't teach you anything about this stuff. But if you want to take this seriously, and if you made it to this part of this video, it's like experiencing the market daily, getting your income right, cost averaging up. There's just very simple terms to do, but it's gonna separate yourself from the 99% of people and the 1% that get richer and richer that are financially educated or the rich dads. But thank you for watching and peace out.